I was just involved in a, I had a very long trial. The trial was a couple of weeks long and uh, I opened uh, in, a, in a manner, in a way that I'm not supposed to open with the, uh, with the case. I opened by sharing a story of what happened to me. Um, I was, uh, it was the summer after high school, after, after I just graduated high school, and I convinced a friend's father to, uh, to invest in a business idea I had. I wanted to open up a nightclub. I always wanted to be a business owner. So uh, I convinced him to, to invest in, the, uh, in this idea for a dance club. And uh, I was putting it together as best as I could. I had some friends going back and forth with me. There's this one particular day we stayed there. We worked for hours inside the club. And we were painting. And we got very far into it, but we were all exhausted. So we took a break. We went home, grabbed some dinner, came back. It's now 10 something, at 10.30 or so at night. We parked in the back. We're going through the back alley entrance. And we start walking there. And I'm with three friends. My, one of my younger sisters and my girlfriend, who's now my wife. And um, this group of guys ran up to us and started asking us questions like, you know, what's going on? You know, you know, where are you from? These types of questions, like questions that aren't natural. And they surrounded us in a way that made us feel very uncomfortable. And I looked over and I saw one of the guys grab the hat off of, uh, off of the, the head of one of my friends. And as soon as I saw that, I knew what was getting ready to happen. And I quickly turned to my sister and my wife, my girlfriend at the time, and I told them to get out of here. And as soon as I said that, I got hit from behind with a lead pipe. I was beat on like a pinata for what seemed like forever. Um, my head was, there's blood all over my face. I could hear my sister and my girlfriend crying. And I couldn't see anything in front of me. Um, people say police are never in the right place at the right time. They came around the corner at that particular time. And that's what made these people run away. My sister and my wife had a gun at their head, pointed at them. So they couldn't do anything except yell, scream, and cry. Went to the hospital for it. Only have a mark on my lip, which I can't really even see anymore, unless I'm looking for it um, to show for it physically. But mentally, I carry it with me. And the thing about it, when it comes to self-defense incidents, there was nothing shown to me at the time. I wasn't shown a gun. I wasn't shown a pipe in advance. Um, I just knew. I was in a situation where I just knew that I was, I was in fear that we were all about to get really badly beaten up or killed. And people don't understand the significance of that. They don't understand what it's like being involved in that situation. It's very different from sitting in a courtroom and listening to somebody else's situation. Being there is very different. And so what I like most about my job when it comes to defending the good guys defending the people that had to defend themselves is being that voice. Making it known to the judge, to the jury, who's comfortably seated in the courtroom, exactly what my client was experiencing. Being that, that, that almost superpower, because this person just took just, just survived a situation like this and is, and, and is just had to deal with this horrific situation and can't always articulate for themselves what they're dealing with. You can't say I knew when somebody's grabbing a hat, it doesn't make any sense hearing it. But you do know, you know when you're involved in that situation. And so I like to be able to speak for people that can't speak for themselves. And I like to be able to defend these people after they've been involved in these situations. And I like to be able to tell their story the best that, the, that I can and to obtain the results, to send them home, to, to be back with their family. Because just as I said, even though whether you, can, whether you have anything physical in terms of injuries to actually show anything that you sustained as a result of this, whether you have that or not, mentally you still have to live with this. You still continue to live with this 
after the situation has taken place. So that's why I enjoy doing what I do.